I understand. It's it's. Um, I think I understand what you're saying because I've experienced something like this, which is that you have an inspiration, but then translating it into, in your case, words, is difficult. So, Swami talked about um, a movie called. Brother Sun, Sister Moon. And the music, the theme music for it was done by a recording artist named Donovan. And Swami didn't know about any of this when he wrote a piece of music himself called Canticle of the Creatures about St. Francis' life. This is something that St. Francis actually wrote. So, and the words Brother, Son, Sister, Moon are sort of taken from that Italian canticle of the creatures. So Swami's point was saying that he himself came up with a similar melody to what Donovan had come up with, but Donovan lost the inspiration and it descended into just a common sort of pop song. But Swami said his inspiration was able to sustain. And so what you hear in Canticle of the Creatures is much more appropriate to the time period that St. Francis lived. It's very elevated in its inspiration. So it was an interesting story about sustaining that inspiration. So I would suggest that you try to keep that level of inspiration as you're writing and keep praying, Lord, I don't have the words, but you have the words. So please write this through me. And it's an exercise in listening very, very sensitively and not getting in the way. There's another story about Swami, uh, who, as you know, is a very prolific writer, a fabulous writer. And one day, he had been told by friends or, I don't know, maybe some interviewer or something like that, that he must have been Shakespeare in a past life. And so when he sat to write, he was thinking, I was probably Shakespeare in a past life. I, I, so he had all this pressure, and he had to perform, and I can't disappoint my public, or whatever. But he had this thought in his mind of, I was Shakespeare in a past life. <laughs> and he said, of course, the thoughts didn't come. They were just, it was empty. It was nonsense. And he had to let go of all of that and just say, Master, what do you want me to say? And we have to let go of any self-definitions, any feeling of, oh, this has to be good because it's for this purpose, and all of that. Just let it go. When Swamiji was writing the beautiful Festival of Light, 
he was in that flow. Okay, Master, God, what do you want me to say? And what came through was there was a little bird. And Swami went, wait a minute, what does a little bird have to do with anything? Fledgling bird <laughs> a once fledgling, flew out into the world. <laughs> there it is, a fledgling bird once flew out into the world. And he rejected that idea. It was like, well, I'm not writing something about that. I'm writing something about this festival of light. But he then allowed that thought. Okay, God, if that's what you want, doesn't make any sense to me, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with it. And as he wrote it, as he tuned in, as he allowed it to come, then he saw it was the essence of the whole thing. It was an allegory of the soul in its search for God. So those are some ideas of just accepting and letting it flow through you. And then, of course, as Swami would do himself, be very selective, but show it to someone that you trust and then let them give you some feedback on it. So it's not just this pronouncement that has come through the divine and I'm sharing it with you on high or something. Swami was always very careful about that. And I say be selective because people can just ruin inspirations. They can just rip them to shreds before they're fully formed or fully manifested. So he was very careful about that. And I remember a line in the Festival of Light that someone had told him to get rid of because it just was uh, something in her mind she didn't like. And so Swami asked me about it. And I said, Swami, it's one of my favorite lines. Please don't get rid of that. It's important to say the cosmic view of what we're talking about on this spiritual path. And so be very selective. Know what was true in your own inspiration and hang on to that. It may take a while to manifest, but keep yourself or keep getting yourself into that elevated state and keep trying to manifest what God is, is showing to you. And, I hope that helps. And know that it always gets better as you try. You know, the creative attunement process is sort of like physical fitness in a way. The, the muscles get stronger, <laughs> the you know, the flow gets stronger as you work with it and develop it. So it's not something that, you know, you're necessarily born with, but you can grow into it. And, and we have to. It's intuition is the soul's power to know God. So we have to work with that intuition. Well, dear ones, thank you. So anything else? I see the little chat is still lit there, but I haven't gone to see. Maybe it's all. Yeah. There is no, another question in the chat, but if you don't mind, uh, you mentioned something about thoughts of writing a book. And, mm -hmm. you know, do you have any, both of you, any of you, any thoughts in the horizon? Perhaps you mentioned asking about truth and things with Swamiji, but also perhaps about music. Are there any thoughts in the ether or perhaps more than just thoughts perhaps maybe even energy going in that direction well ask me about truth is a natural subject because it's it's a, a fascinating story and there's so much material there that can be explored and so we've we've wanted to share that um, that's a first step i mean there's there are other things that we could write about as well um, time with swamiji and yeah but that, that would form a, a really good beginning. And uh, so that's something that we've thought about for years. We just, part of us getting this retreat that Nirmala was talking about <laughs> was to actually 
have the space to have a place to be and be quiet and, and work on that sort of thing. Because it's harder to do it here. There's, I mean, it's lovely in the community and, and compared to a lot of cities, city environments, this is relatively quiet. People come here and they'll say, oh, this is so quiet. <laughs> but for us, it's, there's a lot going on here. There's <laughs> 50 or 75 people and there's a lot of activity. And, you know, we, when, when we step out the front door, people are, you know, happy to see us and want to ask questions and have, you know, the next part of the conversation that's ongoing. They sort of draw on that and it's a little harder to be in the artistic flow in this environment, in that kind of way. So we've wanted to have a space to do that. And so now, now that space is developing. And um, so I don't, I, can't have a, I don't have a time frame for it, but I would like to hope that we could get started on it this year. We'll see what God wants. Yeah. <laughs>